I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we set up the SPS, aka the Super Critical Phase Shifter, and start producing antimatter. Also, setting up an induction matrix. That's right, power storage, baby. Let's go. Now, last episode, here in All The Mods 9, I set up a fission reactor, the one that you see currently behind me. And well, we are running this at an insane rate, or at least I think it's an insane. I've bumped it up to 140, and I still think it can go even higher in the millibuckets per tick. But today, we need to take all of the pellets and all of that stuff that we produced last episode, the polonium and the plutonium, and we need to combine this and create an antimatter machine, aka the SPS or the supercritical phase shifter. Now to make the SPS, it doesn't require all that much. However, it does require all the things that we've done the last couple of episodes. So if you didn't catch episode 30, 31, and now this one, I recommend checking those out because that will catch you back up on how we're actually doing all of this um, and how we're producing our fizzle fuel and all of that fun stuff to be able to get the amount of antimatter that we're gonna get from this setup. Because believe me, it's going to be quite a lot. So all we need to do is make 72 of these cases. So we'll make 72 of these SPS cases. And as you see, this is going to require the HDPE sheets that we set up last episode. So it's gonna require 288 polonium and 72 of the plutonium pellets, which honestly, you don't need a lot of plutonium pellets. So you can probably shut that part off um, at this point. So now that I have all of this, I can go ahead and get that crafted up. And then once we have the 72, we can then craft the three SPS ports that we're gonna need. We're gonna need one to receive the antimatter from, we're gonna need one of the ports to send power to, and one of the ports to send the waste to. And we're gonna use all of that in combination to produce antimatter pellets. Well, just antimatter in general, and then we can convert it into pellets. Now, there is a couple of other things we're going to need. We're also gonna need reactor glass, which I believe we can use it may be structural, structural glass or reactor glass. We'll figure that out when we get this together. Um, but I'm going to try reactor glass first. But we also need a supercharged coil. So the supercharged coil is pretty simple to make. It requires a laser and then just your basic components that we automated way, way long ago with automating all of our circuits. So we'll get this crafted up. It crafts up so fast. Our like setup to craft all of the things from mechanism happens insanely fast, in my opinion. It's already done. And now we have the SPS cases that are also already done. Just to show how fast the crafting is with refined storage, we can go ahead and craft the mechanism reactor glass, right? Let me just craft up just a few more of these. And it, it almost happens instantaneously. It's, uh, it's kind of insane. So there it goes, and it's just filling up. And this, by the way, may, has to make enriched iron. So it, it's just phenomenal. Now it's time for the hardest part about setting up that SPS or supercritical phase shifter. And that's the building process. And I have a recommendation for how to build this and build it successfully. You wanna find the center point of your structure. And then you're going to go out two blocks on all sides. For right now, I'm using reactor glass, but I think structure glass we may have to exchange it for. I like the way structure glass looks anyways over this. Um, so we've gone out two blocks and then we can go ahead and mark our endpoints with our new SPS casing. And that is going to go out here. And then what we're gonna do is extend this out and that will get us our foundation of the way this is supposed to look. Um, and then in the corners here, like on the corners of this build, we will just simply put these casings in. Um, and this is how the base shape will be with the interior being all glass such as this. Now, the next part is where things get a little bit trippy, in my opinion. It's because we need to account for this edge right here and do the exact same shape, but we go up. So that means there needs to be blocks right here as buffer blocks that need to be broken, right? And then we will buffer off again. Let's go ahead and just use glass for right now. And then we build up three blocks, one, two, three. And then we're gonna buffer again, place a block, and then we'll go up and over three more again. So we're basically building the same shape on all four sides now. So after everything is sort of done, this is sort of what it should look like, uh, minus the reactor glass being on the sides here. But here we go. This is ultimately the structure. And then we just need to fill in glass on all of the sides. Now I think is if all is complete, we should be able to have a completed structure. So perfect. So this does work using the reactor glass 
is effective. Now, at this point, I am pretty stoked. I'm pretty excited about this super critical phase shifting. What does that even mean? I have no idea either, but we are gonna be producing antimatter very, very soon. So the thing that I want to do is I wanna place my supercharged coil up top here. Uh, we are gonna be replacing that with an SPS port, and then our SPS port can go one here, and then I need one in the back, and then one in the top, just like so. Um, and I think we can use our configuration here to change this. By the way, this is going to be an input. Uh, I think this, for example, this is still input. We're inputting power. And then on this side, this is actually going to be an output because this is where we're going to be receiving our antimatter. And then on the back here, this is where we're going to be sending our waste. Now, you may notice I did put a solar neutron activator here because we may end up having more than one solar neutron activator. But for right now, I'm just going to be using this one, and that is going to send what we actually need to send in. So the, sooner, so, uh, the solar neutron activator is going to produce the polonium. The polonium is what's needed in order to convert into antimatter inside of this SPS. So it needs to be eternal day. Thus the whole reason that I chose this dimension being the ever bright dimension. So at this point, to get this running, we need to hook up some power to it, but we also need to get our waste transferred over here. Um, but we need to configure the sides. So as of right now, um, if we go ahead and look at what this block is, for example, we can put a block in front of it to help us see what sides what. Uh, let's put a black concrete in front here. So this will be the side that we input into, and we need to make sure that that is configured correctly under the gases tab. Let's go ahead and clear this out entirely. The black is the front, that's gonna be the input, and then we need to make sure that the back side here, now set to black concrete, is going to be an output. So we want to output here, and that should be set up and ready to go. All we gotta do now is get our cables, um, not, not normal cables, but we need tubes, because we're sending gases, and so we're gonna need to make a few pressurized tubes and run those all the way underneath this area and then tap into what is currently producing polonium pellets. And then we can just shut this off. That's probably enough polonium for now. By the way, to shut off these machines, just simply click this disable right here or the redstone button and you can click it and that will actually stop it. It will fill up with nuclear waste, but once it's full, it's no longer gonna continue processing anything. Now, I'm not currently going to do this until I have the cables hooked in because I don't want this to start building very quickly with the waste. Um, so let me get the pipes ran. There's nothing like running cable pipe underwater. And this is just honestly a really pretty dimension. Now there is one more thing that I need to do before I fully plug it in. And that is make sure that this is outputting and sending into this SPS port, which as you see right here, doesn't look like it is fully connected. And that's because the multi-block has not been fully completed yet. So let's go ahead and get the reactor glass on here. And as soon as the multi-block is completed, this should now be hooked in. Now also, let's give this some power. Uh, now, to give it power, I'm going to be very specific about this. We do have a dual power network. Currently, our, uh, our reactors that we have in the main world, in our overworld, we currently have some nitro reactors running. They are sending power to a buffer uh, that is going in the main. So that's why we have two. We can use the main on this, which is just fine. But we do want to limit our power. So currently it is limited to uh, 800,000. Let's go ahead and knock this to 500,000 for right now. And we're going to limit the amount of power by 500,000 that this can actually utilize. Otherwise, it's going to use as much as you give it. Um, and it has no problem doing that. Uh, but the more power you give it, the more and, and the faster it will produce antimatter. But that also needs to be in consideration of about uh, how fast we're producing waste. So I think with our waste production, we'll have to kind of adjust that once we get it running. But I think at this point, we are now ready to go. I know, enough of this just getting things done. Let's let's put it together. Oh boy. All I have to do, I think, is connect here. And then we should have waste uh, routed through this. We already see the waste going through it. Oh boy, it is running. It is running. It is hooked up now. Okay. And it is processing. You can see right here, it is pl processing plutonium right now. And I haven't even shut off the machine. And we just got our first millibucket of antimatter. 
this is full. So our current burn rate, we do not have enough power to sustain our current burn rate. I can keep adjusting this though. Let's just give it a, a solid one mil, right? Doubling where we're currently at. And notice this is now going faster. And this shows us what our current processing rate is. And it is totally not enough to keep up right now. And I think what will end up happening is if we do shut this machine off that is currently utilizing some of this waste, the waste would build up in the tube and could cause some problems down the line. Now, this thing is also very, very loud. So it's probably best if I do this. Um, I don't know if it's spelled actually super critical or SPS. Yes, the SPS itself has its own sound just called SPS. So definitely limit that. Now, I do want to take out the antimatter. We're already, we already got 19. Now, this does need 1,000 millibuckets of antimatter to make one pellet. So this goes to show how slow this actually is. But believe me, is this is actually pretty fast, even with us only giving it this, uh, this amount of power, so 1 million RF per tick. But we can give it way more. And that's sort of planned for a future episode. I do want to start producing a ton more power. Now, before we do that, let's get our crystallizer set up and I'm gonna place the crystallizer down here and just get my mechanical, I believe it's a mechanical pipe, right? Uh, it may not be. I thought, okay, so maybe is antimatter a gas? I guess antimatter is a gas. So we need tubes. I always, I always sort of forget. Yes, okay, so it is in a tube, so it is a gas. Um, now. We need to send the antimatter in here. It automatically does that. And it's going into the crystallizer. And the crystallizer is going to let us use this antimatter to make pellets. So once we get enough, it's going to automatically convert it into a pellet for us. No need for us to worry about anything backing up. It should just function. Now, antimatter does have some other uses. This doesn't require a whole lot of antimatter. As you see, like five millibuckets of antimatter can convert a, wither, or a regular skull into a wither skeleton skull. I think some more useful like setups for this would be like, I don't know, convert uh, a golden apple into an enchanted golden apple. And also the dragon egg is a really good one. A single egg with just four antimatter produces a dragon egg. So these are pretty cool. These are really, really nice. Um, we already have Nautilus shells and other things. So there's really nothing in this list that's amazing. Even though I wish mod pack devs would add more things to this because I really think this would be a cool use. I'm sure there are mod packs that do this in a way, but this will be pretty cool to set up antimatter and have it running and also get some sort of nice reward from it. Now, once we finally do get ourselves in antimatter pellets or several antimatter pellets, I think the mechanism armor is going to be something worth dabbling into. Unfortunately, mechanism armor, well, it's not uh it's not super useful until you have antimatter really. Until you can get yourself the gravitational unit and allow yourself to fly. But ultimately, that's the thing we actually need to craft in order to just make one star. So we're gonna need several of these antimatter pellets to eventually get uh, the two blocks of all the one star that I, I want. Now, I know you may be wondering, Chosen, how are you ever going to get enough power to supply that thing? And well, I tell you, eventually we're going to get into more industrial foregoing, and that is going to open up a way to produce over 25 million RF per tick. I also think it's an incredibly fun way of doing it. So speaking of power and also gathering a bunch of it, why don't we also talk about storage and how we're going to store our power? Because at this point, we should be able to also make some power storage for mechanism. And it's gotta be one of the best ways to store power in the entire pack. And that is going to be through the use of an induction matrix, which is more than just a single item. It's an entire multi-block. Now the making of the induction matrix is quite a lot because you do need every energy cube. So we're gonna have to have an energy cube for each one of these induction providers and induction cells that we are going to use. Um, so it, it's quite a bit. You can get by, by the way, with one induction provider and one induction cell, and that's probably what we're gonna do to start, but we can always expand. I think just setting up a basic one is great and it is a lot of resources to do. So this is going to be, uh, like I said, one induction cell, but this is going to require four of the elite versions. And each one of these require energy cubes to make. Uh, four of the advanced and four of the basic, right? And then all of that lithium that we made two episodes ago, this right here is really going to come into play. But like I said, I've got to make patterns for every single one of these things. Also making sure exact is not checked for this, 
uh, will help if there's any weird issues with our energy cubes. My goodness, look at this. Oh, it's just beautiful watching the auto crafts take place and just all of the ingredients slowly but surely being built up to be able to craft the induction cell and the induction provider. Now, in the meantime, I am setting up currently the induction casings um, and you can build this a lot smaller. You can make this a three by three. This one is going to be a five by five by five cube. And I went ahead and put illuminated blocks on the outside where this glass is going to reside. And this is going to fit in perfect, uh, especially being able to see into this. Oh, it's going to be kind of beautiful. Also upgradable because if we were to build the smaller size, we would never be able to add more to it. Um, so with this going on, we can always add to it. And I think this will complete the structure like so. There we go. You can see um, it's it's a reactor, uh, but uh, but yeah, there's no power stored in it because there's no power at all available. Now, there is more than just this we need to worry about. Um, so if we get back to our crafting grid, we will have the induction uh, casings, but we also need induction ports, two of them, because we're going to need a way to send power in and we need a way to pull power out. And this is going to be pretty cool because we're going to take all of our current power that we're generating at the moment and we are going to send it directly into this machine in a couple of different ways. But we're also going to then convert everything to pulling out of this machine. And I'm going to show you how I want to do that. So now here we are. We'll have an induction provider and induction cell. Now the cell is what stores the power. The provider is actually what lets you trans uh, transport the power in and out. Um, so I'm going to place the induction cell right here and then the induction provider on top. Uh, I don't know if this order necessarily matters, but I do remember this, even though it, it does show you in this pack that you can place it like this. Um, I do remember that uh, this has to be touching the casing. So I guess it does in this place right here, but we put this together. Bam. And now you can see that we can store up to 1.6 trillion FE in here. That's a lot for just a single block basically, or two blocks worth of material in there, even though they're they're quite compressed down. Uh, but now we need to take our configurator and we need to set one side as an input and one side as an output. So this side will be an input and then we'll shift right click and turn this into an output. So now we're pretty much ready to go, but there is kind of a problem that we have to figure out. And that is now that we have two separate power storages, how are we gonna handle that? Well, we have to sort of change how we currently work everything. Um, and we're going to need our main input to be in here and we can already configure this, but let's take our flux point and we're going to go ahead and start inputting power in. Now, where are we going to get our power from? Well, that main input right here that we set up, this is coming off of our reactors. So if I set this right now, and I'm not going to select the buffer by the way, cause I don't want to give it too much power, but we can now see by right clicking this, how much of the throughput we're using. The cool part is, is we will also be able to monitor how much we're outputting which is gonna be really nice in this machine, being able to see those statistics. So this is a good way to actually keep up with your network as well. But this runs into a problem. Well, now if we're sending, if we imagine we're sending all of our power into here, then that means that our, uh, we're, not, we're not actually sending power to all of our points that we're using from power. So how do we fix that? Well, since we're going to be completely sending all of our power into there, what we can do in this particular setup is we'll just change this point right here and we'll change it to be a little bit different. We do want it to send power into here, but we don't want our plug to currently be receiving power. We wanna move this plug into a different location. So this plug, which is also, by the way, feeding our network over here, which I do wanna, to, I just wanna leave this. We're just gonna simply move our plugs. So hopefully this will work. And if, if my brain serves me well, this should work. We just simply need to take our plug and th uh, this is going to receive the power from here. And now the, the kind of things are flipped, right? So everything should be working. Um, but what we want to do is change our network up here. So currently we were pulling directly from the reactors. Oh no, we were pulling from the hub. Okay. So no, this actually should be correct as well. So everything should be smooth. We should be able to see how much power we're actually sending. Uh, we do want to bypass the limit here. And we'll be able to see the current amount. So we're sending out 1 million out of this flux plug. It's a little more than a million because we're also sending to our refined storage system. But over here, we want to bypass this limit so we can start getting as much power out of our reactors as possible. And that is going to start feeding in here. 
And it looks like we're, we have a ton of power, but that was all of the backlog of power. I don't think we're producing 5 million. It should be more like exactly 2 million. There it goes. So we're getting down closer to what the actual number is. Um, but we should be good. This should now show us how much total energy we are producing and how much we're actually utilizing. Now, a thing that I want to do so we can see our power a little bit more effectively is, well, we need to swap networks here. So the, the power that we're actually sending into the nitro cell, we're gonna pull it from the other network so we can better visualize our power and where it's going. So in that setup, we should now see the exact 2 million back at our mechanism base. And the 2 million should now be showing up better because we're, we have nothing in line of what we're actually generating here. So yeah, it's a lot closer to that 2 million mark. Perfect, now with everything running, yes, the 2.2 million is currently what our total is that we are producing. And we see that it is start, starting to build up, uh, but we are outputting quite a bit of that 2 million. We do have a little bit of wiggle room in there, but for the most part, this is uh, creating that nice buffer that we can now see and gauge our power from. Oh, which is very, very nice. That's such a nice feature. And I wish more mods like added features like that. I wish Power had a better way of like monitoring your total network's usage, but really you have not, a, you don't have a good way of seeing that information. It's a completely different story with Flux Networks. As you can see, the connections over here on the networks is very, very detailed. Um, so yes, but we can still use the, the Power stuff. Uh, I really like the flat transfer nodes. I really like these flat, well, I call them flat transfer nodes. I really like these flat gates that we use on all of our machines instead of using points on everyone because these are just kind of place and play. Whereas the, the flux networks, you have to place then configure every single one of them. These are just ready to go and are super, super simple. And also you can't tell me that that doesn't look very cool isolated in like a little chamber. That's so neat looking. Oh yeah, at this point, I think I should have had this whole suit of armor on at this point. Oh, that would have looked so much better. Oh, we should have had this on the entire time. Well, now we have it on and I can also go ahead and toggle this because we do have that cosmetic slot. I really like the cosmetic armor slot because there's always, I want to keep my main gear running, but I, sometimes I just want to wear other gear and just fashion it out, you know? Now, I also kind of want to get into something else being the actual fusion reactor. I've never built a fusion reactor, but this is gonna be something I'm going to experiment with in the coming episodes. So be sure to check that out. It is ultimately the end game of end game power in this pack as it can produce millions and millions and millions of RF per tick, which is gonna be necessary, I think, for, for this alone. And this is a very, this is our, our biggest power hog right here. And kind of the cool part about actually making deuterium and tritium is, well, we already have our deuterium uh, pretty much made. So our, our tritium, we can, we can make tritium by just taking this liquid lithium by replacing this drawer, right? With some, uh, or replacing this machine with uh, a solar neutron activator. And it's just going to produce tritium. That's incredibly powerful. Uh, and then to be able to get deuterium, this stuff right here just comes from water. So we just need some pumps, pumping water, pumping heavy water with a filter, and then we just need to electrolytic separate it. And that's basically it. We have the two fuels and it combines together and we have a ton of power, but I've never done this process. So this is going to be an interesting thing for me. And I'm gonna try and utilize what they show here, which is pretty cool that they actually have sort of an, a, uh, a create, what did they call these called ponder? They have these create ponders on it, which is really cool, honestly. It just, I'm scared with the laser thing. That, we I guess you laser it to jumpstart it. I mean, it's kind of how it would work in real life, I guess. If this was actually doable in real life at a successful way, it looks really cool. I, I can't lie, that's pretty sick looking. Maybe one of these days we'll actually have an IRL fusion reactor. Uh, apparently, if you if you do some search in it, it looks like it's expected in 2040. So, so see you in 2040 when we have infinite power, like like literally more power than we'll ever know what to do with, right? Or the AI robots will use all that power. That's probably what we'll need it for. But until then, you just get to watch me create one in this Minecraft game. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you learned something new as we now have antimatter running. We have all of the mechanism stuff sort of in place all the way up to late game mechanism. And this is going to be running while we work on other things. 
because there's still more things that we need to do to prep ourselves for the other month star and also expand more of our power infrastructure, which is going to happen very, very soon. Well, if you did enjoy, be sure to click that subscribe button and also give this video a huge thumbs up. Also comment down below. What do you think? Is there a perfect ratio for setting up that, uh, that fusion reactor? I would love to know. Let me know down in the comments. That's one thing is this is really hard to find things online. It really is. So if you guys have the perfect setup for it, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And well, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to, which I always hit too many buttons. Thanks is going to go out to Danny. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And that is through the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Join the amazing crew today. Oh man, of over 30,000 members. If you got questions, it's a great place to ask them. We have a fantastic support over there. Have you ever lost a world? Well, we have solution to that in the FAQ channels. So be sure to check it out. We have tons of information over there and I would love to have you. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, yet again, I say this too much, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.